Okay, now let's set everything up. So I have my hardware here. Um, here it is, uh, this board. Uh, and uh, first we need to upload the firmware to, uh, in there. So we need a MicroPython running there. And what we can do, we can go to this um, uh, GitHub repository or repo, uh, DIY Bitcoin hardware slash F469 disco. Uh, and uh, basically here you can just clone it and compile it or you can go to the releases and look at the binaries. So here we have two binaries. One is empty one and another one is not empty. So the difference is that in empty uh, binary we only have uh, the C binding, so everything that is compiled with MicroPython and needs to be compiled with MicroPython. So the uh, bindings to the GUI library and to um, segp 251 but it doesn't have the Bitcoin Python library. And this guy has the Bitcoin Python library that is uh, frozen in the code, so this means that we cannot change the source code of this library, but uh, it is very optimized in sense of um, amount of space uh, and performance uh, that is taken on the microcontroller. So uh, if you want to change the source code of the uh, Bitcoin library, then you probably want to take the empty bin and uh, empty firmware and then um, copy paste the library itself uh, to, the, uh, to the board. So let me uh, probably show you this way. Uh, but in principle, I would recommend you just uh, download in this binary. So we have our empty binary. Uh, and now what we do, we go to our board and we connect the board uh, with mini USB cable. And when it is powered on, uh, we will see a volume here that was uh, mounted to our system uh, called uh, DSF469 and I. Uh, this is what I was uh, talking about before, uh, that we have a separate microcontroller that makes it easy to upload the firm firmware to the port. So what we do, we open this volume and we just drag and drop uh, stuff in here. So we just drag and drop the binary that we downloaded from the website. It takes some time to, uh, to flash because it is like almost one megabyte, uh, but uh, should be done soon. Let's wait a bit. Um, okay, so it is done, it unmounted and mounted again. So now we have MicroPython there. How do we interact with it? Uh, so we have another port as well uh, here. Uh, this is a mi micro USB cable. So when we connect uh, the board over micro USB cable, then we will see another volume appearing on our um, on our computer, PYB flash. And this is already uh, what uh, MicroPython is doing for us. So it also exposing the internals uh, of the microcontroller to us as a simple USB drive. And we already have here the boot PY and the main PY files. So boot PY is the first one that is uh, run on the board when it boots, uh, but it's better to either not touch it or make it really minimal. Uh, and then we have the main py file where we will describe all our main logic and in principle we can just uh, put here uh, a folder with the uh, with the python files and uh, like uh, work as normal basically so now uh, as we uploaded the empty firmware that doesn't have a bitcoin library uh, we need to put it uh, in here so um, first how to talk to the boards well no first let's Put the Bitcoin library there. Uh, we can just clone this repo or download it and then here we have the library folder. So this library, let me just copy it over to, dun, 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 to the workshop folder. So I will put it here and extract. Okay. Uh, so we have our lit folder and uh, yeah, here we have the Bitcoin library and the little VJ. Uh, well, not the little VJ, sorry, this is like a Python uh, implementation of the QR code that we will need for addresses and master keys. So we can just uh, copy these two files. This is basically everything uh, that is implemented in Python and we can edit it. Uh, and we put it uh, directly here, but let's create a folder lib. 
uh, it is by default in the uh, syspath of MicroPython, so it will search in this folder as well. And we put there uh, the Bitcoin library and uh, LV, LV QR, QR thing. Uh, okay, now uh, we have two options. Either we can um, change the Python files that are on the board directly, or we can also get uh, to uh, connect to the board over serial port and uh, talk uh, like, you know, when you run Python, uh, you have this uh, command line. Uh, and uh, the same we can do with MicroPython, so we just need to connect to the board. So I'm using screen for that. Uh, there are also other tools like Miniterm or uh, in Windows, I suppose, Putty works for this, uh, but I'm not a pro. Uh, so anyways, uh, we are using screen and I connect to devices, TTY, USB, and there are two devices, right? Because we connected the board over two USB ports and each of them does something. So the um, MicroPython one is this one, uh, and uh, you can understand that uh, by unmounting and mounting, uh, well, unconnecting and connecting the uh, micro USB cable and see which of them uh, disappears. But I just already know that it is this one. And uh, if you want, you can define the baud rate, and by default it is 100, uh, or, yeah, 115, uh, 200. But you can also connect just like this, and it will auto detect, I suppose. Okay, and we got into the MicroPython console. Uh, great. Uh, here we can type help, and it tells us some stuff. Uh, how to use the pins, the LEDs, uh, what are the control commands, and so on. Uh, and another nice thing is that we can write help modules. And we can get a list of all modules that we have. Uh, so what we have here, in addition to default MicroPython build, is LVGL binding. Uh, we have the display uh, module uh, that allows us to uh, talk to display, and we also have extended uh, hashlib uh, that includes uh, SHA-512, uh, RIPMD-160, and so on. Uh, and uh, we also have SEC-P261. Great. It doesn't show here the Bitcoin uh, libraries because they were not frozen and they are just put on the file system. So here you see plus any modules on the file system. Um, well, great. Let's um, from this uh, interface, let's make uh, something working. So what we can do, we can, for example, um, turn on the display. So import display, display init. We have the white screen. Great. Uh, then we also can blink with an LEDs. Uh, so uh, LEDs are stored in this PYB module. Uh, so we can do import PYB and then LED equal to PYB LED. Let's say this is one, two, three, four. Let's blink with the third one, three. And then we can do let toggle. And yeah, it's working. Great. Uh, in principle, uh, MicroPython console allows also mm, to do the auto completion. So if you type LED dot, uh, then you see that intensity on, off, and toggle. Okay. And so it's pretty handy. Um, great. Uh, it's fine to work with the serial ports uh, at first, but obviously later we want to write a more complicated stuff and we want to actually do the file. So uh, the, there are two other ways. First, we can either uh, we can uh, edit the main py file, uh, or we can use Jupyter Notebook. Uh, so let me disconnect from here, uh, and let's edit the main py file first. So we go to our pyp flash, and we open the main py file. Great, and uh, we basically want to make it, for example, blink uh, with this uh, LEDs. So what we do, we do import PYB, uh, then we do uh, if main, uh, yeah, let's uh, do main, uh, and then here we will have LED, let's make an array, LEDs equal to um, PYB LED i for i in range 1, 5. So it will basically do, uh, do LED 1, 2, 3, 
up to LED4. Great. And in the cycle, what you do, uh, let's uh, sleep for some time, import time. Uh, and uh, in here, we will do the while loop, while true, uh, time sleep 0.1 seconds, and then um, for LED in LEDs, LED toggle. Great. Um, ideally, it should just go to the infinite loop and then with the 0.1 millisecond delay toggle all the LEDs. Let's see, we save it. Uh, then we can either reset it uh, using the black button, but then it will, uh, well, yeah, that, that actually can work. But there is also another way. So if we connect uh, to the serial port again, uh, we can do, we can press Ctrl D and it will reset. So, and you see on the camera, it is now blinking. Uh, now, if you click Ctrl C, it will stop. Uh, it will basically uh, interrupt the program that we are running at the moment. So now we can change something. Let's, for example, uh, put our sleep inside the loop. And this means that it will go uh, like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, right? Uh, so let's again reset uh, the device. Um, Ctrl D. And you see that it is now blinking like that. Great. And then we, we stop this. Okay, uh, now the next thing. So we already worked with the main PY file, we worked from the serial console, now it's time to work from Jupyter Notebook. Because in principle, Jupyter Notebook is great for prototyping uh, when you need uh, to write uh, uh, big parts of code. So to work with the Jupyter Notebook, we have this Jupyter kernel in the repository, so I already have it downloaded here. Uh, and uh, if you go to the readme file in this Jupyter kernel, you can see how to install it. Uh, the only thing is that uh, I wrote it recently and uh, um, it's still not polished yet, so at the moment you actually need to uh, copy it over to the folder where you're gonna work with this. Um, yeah, I will uh, fix it uh, later on, so just um, wait a bit. <laughs> Uh, but at the moment, uh, if we are we are going to use uh, to work in this uh, workshop folder, and I just copied there the kernel, and uh, then I can just run Jupyter Notebook, and what I have here is I can create a new F469 MicroPython kernel, and let's call it Blinky. Uh, and now I can connect either to the hardware device or to the MicroPython uh, Unix port. So you can also use uh, the same code in the, uh, on the Unix uh, in the emulator. So to connect to the real device, what we do, we type connect and then the port and the baud rate. So the port and the baud rate. Great, and uh, now what we can do, we can do basically the same. So we can import PYB, uh, call the LEDs uh, that are PYB LED of i for i in range 1.5. Uh, and then we can just print LEDs. So these are our LEDs. And then now uh, for LED in LEDs, we can just um, do toggle. Okay, they are on now. Uh, great. Uh, also, we can uh, type the same help stuff here and help modules. Mm, great. And uh, let's turn on the display and uh, draw something on the display just uh, to show how roughly it works. So, import display, display init. And also, we will need a LVJL library and we will import it as LV. Okay, now the display is on and we can draw on it. So uh, little VGL is really great and you should check it out. So it is littlevgl.com. Uh, they have uh, a very powerful, uh, well, a lot of widgets, very powerful logic in there. So you can do animations, you can do buttons, checkboxes, different themes, styles, and so on. And they also have a very good documentation. So in the docs, you can actually uh, see all the examples for all the widget types that they have. 
And for example, for the button, you can look uh, how to work with the button. There should be an example somewhere. And here also the mi simple MicroPython example. Um, yeah, for example, this. So let's uh, create this button. Uh, first, we need a current active screen. And then we create a button that will be a child of the screen. And if you run this, we see the button here. Uh, now we can uh, set the position of the button and uh, set uh, the size of the button, for example, just the width. Uh, and also we can create a label. Now let's run this. Uh, we can create a label that is um, a child of the button, so it will be placed in the button. And now we have uh, here this button with the text text. So I can click on it and you can't really see it because of uh, the frame rate, uh, but it actually clicks. Um, yeah, uh, and then what we can do, we can just take this function, uh, let callback for example, and we can um, assign this for the button. So we can say button uh, set event um, callback, let callback. Uh, the only thing is that this uh, callback takes an object and the event, object that called, uh, that was pressed, uh, and the event uh, that triggered actually this callback. And we need to compare that uh, if event is LV event released, then we toggle all the solutions. Okay, so we run this, and now when I click on the button, all the LEDs are turned on and off. Great. Um, that's it for the introduction. Uh, let me just show how to use uh, Jupyter Notebook to work with the Unix port. So it is also possible, and the only thing that we need to do instead of this, uh, we need to call uh, spawn and then the path to the binary. In our case, uh, we are located here, and this is our Blinky, and I have these binaries and MicroPython Unix, so I can just say uh, binaries uh, MicroPython Unix. Okay, so now I connect it to the Unix port, and now let's run... Uh, so uh, the Unix port doesn't have uh, the LEDs, obviously, and it is also missing a few other features, but uh, for good programming, for example, it is perfectly fine. So we can rerun this part, uh, display uh, init uh, and stuff, and we see that uh, the screen appeared here, uh, that... Um, yeah, basically the simulator uh, created a screen uh, that is exactly the same dimension as the screen of the device. And now we can uh, again uh, run this stuff to see the button. Here is our button. And we can again set the button position and width. And we can create the text of the button. We can also uh, do something like uh, label set text all world. Yeah. So it just works. Uh, in principle, um, almost everything you can uh, debug in the simulator, and I will probably use simulator in the later videos, unless we need to use some uh, hardware-specific specific part, for example, a true random number generator.